What's up everyone? So today I wanted to talk about one of the big issues that Noob Cybot has um, in this game in my opinion. So let me lead with this. Noob Cybot is probably one of the strongest zoners in the game. I think he has an argument for being one of the strongest mid-screen zoners in the game. He has a few full screen issues which forces you to kind of play a cat and mouse game with some characters like a uh, big old scorpion over here. You're usually actually playing a huge cat and mouse game with him because ironically in some situations scorpion can kind of really deal with him pretty easily from full screen. But aside from that, Noob has some of the strongest mid-screen game in my opinion. And even against the characters where he doesn't have strong mid-screen game, their mid-screen options are generally so unsafe that Noob can hit them for like 400 plus damage on one bad read. Um, well, 35 more, more likely, because if you hit him for the 400, they'll break and take their turn. MK11, you gotta love it, right? But anyway, um, long story short, there is one big, big, I cannot stress how big of an issue this has come up with me, or this has come up for me in a lot of situations. So I literally played a Molina player yesterday that did jump kick, jump kick, jump kick, jump kick, right? You would think that Noob has some pretty good options to this. He does. The problem is, all of his options are either risky or they are not very rewarding, right? So Noob probably has the only true DP in the game, right? I consider this a DP. Let me explain why. It's because it's really hard to hit Noob out of this. This is probably one of the best anti in the game, right? It acts as a DP too because the iron, you know, ironically, it goes forward, right? It goes straight up and forward. Most DPs, they travel by going forward and then up, right? I can't really display it here because, I'm, I mean, if you look at Johnny, you, his Rising Shadow is a great example of a DP. Um, it's not a DP though because he's vulnerable when he moves up, right? Well, the thing is, in MK, there are no, at least MK11, there are no invincible anti-airs. There's no anti-airs that have upper, upper body invincibility which is one of the main issues with the game, right? So the closest you can get to an upper body invincible move is to lower your hitbox, which this does. So this is a really good anti-air. Against characters like Scorpion who are doing constant jump kicks, this is a good anti-air. The problem is, there's two problems with this anti-air, right? The first problem with this anti-air is that it doesn't do much damage. So it only hits for like 80 damage. So th this is not a deterrent, right? This is just a get off me move, pretty much. There's a difference between a deterrent and a get off me move, which is maybe I need to talk about that sometime too. A deterrent is something where I hit you for 40% and you're like, oh shit, maybe I shouldn't do that. A get off me move is like, dude, get off me, stop doing this, like leave me alone kind of thing, like give me some space. Not even, not even stop doing this, more like give me some space. This is a give me some space move. If someone is constantly jumping, you do this to get them off of you. So it's not it's not something that's really going to benefit you, right? Now, obviously, you know, you can argue, well, you know, if it's in full screen, they can't jump at you anymore. The problem is noob doesn't do very well full screen. So, you know, if this hit if this knocked him down maybe mid-screen, it would be a little bit better. But with the wake up options, Scorpion can just wake up backward roll and you're pretty much having to play neutral again, right? Now, obviously, there are some situations where you can get meaty roll, um, or not meaty roll, sorry, meaty slide, but you need to re be able to train yourself to react to when someone rolls and when someone gets up late. Because if they get up late, you can amplify it to where they can't move, which is really good. Or if they roll, you have to choose to not amplify it because if you amplify it and they roll forward, when you dash up, you're gonna get punished. So let me show you. 
So here's an example of Noob Cybot anti-airing me after I jump. Oh, let me set me to jump. Right, so let's say he anti-airs me. Right. Um, now, again, he can, in theory, react. Hold so long. Do you know I'm doing this way too quick? He can react, right? So, right? And just not amp it. But you have to train yourself. It's, it always comes down to this in a lot of Oki situations in this game. Like, sometimes it's just best to just not even Oki them because if you don't react correctly, you get punished, right? Now, obviously, you can meaty slide and amp it on the delay wake up. So you do get some sort of Oki, but I just don't think that this is a deterrent for people jumping, right? If you were hitting them for 30% or you got some crazy pressure or you got maybe, maybe even you kind of like the, the up shadow landed them to where they're like right here, right? Like, which is Noob's optimal range, not all the way over here, where Noob has to dash up and guess your, your wake-up options. I think that it would be stronger, right? Now, obviously, Upshadow is the solution, in my opinion. Like, Upshadow, and then there's one more solution I'll talk about. Those are the... the well, one of this is one of the solutions. Like... Upshadow being able to knock them down and you being able to dash up and get an Oki option that is most, for the most part, safe as long as you can react is Noob's best option. It's just, it's one of those options that when you really think about it, it's not as strong as it could be. It's not as strong as a DP in Street Fighter. Like a DP in Street Fighter in some, most situations are going to give you some really strong offensive options or some really good optimal range options. And this one, although it gives you kind of the optimal range when you dash up, it's just lackluster at best in my opinion. Now, there are some really strong high damaging options that Noob Cybot has, right? And these are the ones I'm going to talk about right now. One of the options is obviously stand one. Every character can stand one anti-air in this game. And as you can see there, he can't because Scorpion's doing an early jump kick, which is one of the main issues with the game. But like, yeah, if he does a normal jump in, you can get some good damage. This is completely breakaway safe. Like, they can't punish that, right? Because he's he leans back when he does his, um, his re-stand because that's a re-stand, so it's pretty hard to punish, and if they break, you're so far away, they can't really punish you with an advancing uh, normal or special, so that's a good option, the problem is jump kicks, you know, you, I literally just showed you just then, you can't really anti-air an early jump, I mean, you can, it's just so hard to do, Like, you can, you just have to be like, it has to be literally at the peak of his jump. Right? Now, obviously, so like, I mean, I guess, I guess the way you would do that is you would just get used to like, reacting instantly. You just have to get really good at doing that. I don't know, but I don't see pros doing it, so I don't think it's possible. Right? Like, pros are still false blocking jump-ins or micro-ducking them, so I, I think that argument you know, from most people who kind of look from the outside in or, or practice in the lab. I think it's moot at this point. I think we're, we're seeing, like I said, we're seeing pros micro duck jump ins and flawless block them and air to air them. So I think it's a problem. I think we can admit that it's a problem at this point that no, since the pros aren't doing it, it's most likely not possible, right? You know, I'm just going off results here. Um, now, obviously, he has, um, he can walk back to, like, that's a very common thing you'll see pros do in this game. They'll walk back and trip guard, but that's not an anti-air, so we're not even going to talk about that anymore. That's not an anti-air. That's a, that's a trip card. Anyway, uh, the other options that Noob has is down two, which his down two is actually pretty good. But again, it struggle, it suffers from early jump kick. So unless, like, you react to the peak... 
you know, I can react here, but, you know, as soon as I set Scorpion to do forward three, four, or, you know, back one or anything, I'm not reacting to it because I have to react to him doing the peak jump. And this is the same problem that Stan one has. And then, so finally, we come to the infamous down four, right? So down four works really, really well against a jump in like Scorpions because Scorpions is still slightly horizontal, right? It's slightly horizontal. But the problem is, there's two problems with this jump in. The first, or the, the Santier, the first problem is from a distance, you actually don't get anything. Unless you're playing Snag, you don't get anything because you're too far away to convert. See this? I have to trip guard this. I have to. So I have to pay attention. See, I got that one there because like I was closer. I walked up and did it. But like as you can see here, like I have to, I have to trip guard this. Which I can. I mean, I I can trip guard it if I want. You know, that's a better option. You know, something like that. That's too far. But like that. Oh my gosh. That's another thing, they need to make specials, like, come out when they're supposed to, because you see I'm, I'm, I'm inputting down back, but, or back forward, but it's, they're not coming out. Can't get a trip guard off this. Come on. Uh, something like that. I can't get a really good trip guard off that, but, you know, he can trip guard off back one, forward two, back three, like, he can trip guard there, but, like, the problem is he can't really anti-air here. Um, and get a conversion. Like, the best he can do is this, which is, not, again, this is not a deterrent. It's a get-off-me tool, not a deterrent. This is a get-off-me tool, right? It's not going... It, this is not going to convince Scorpion to stop jumping. Scorpion is going to get 30% off a jump kick, or around there. I need something that's going to get do 30, right? Or get him off breakaway. This is going to do 30 and get him off breakaway. Right? So obviously, these aren't solutions. None of these are solutions as Noob Cybot. The only thing that Noob has outside of down back 4 that is guaranteed to finally at least convince people to maybe not think about jumping is the Duck OS. It always comes back to this. Duck OS is like the best thing in the game. And it's because a scorpion does a uh, a late jump kick, you're safe. He's minus five, and it's your turn. If he does an early one, you get your turn. Why is Noob Cybot the best? Okay. Why is Noob Cybot the best Sagat-like character in this game having to not do his anti-air and forced to do the duck OS because he doesn't have anti-airs because of how dump busted and dumb the jump-ins are in this game? That is my question. Now, I'm not saying that you can't, you can finally convince them, you can't finally convince them to stop jumping, because obviously with all the options I showed you here, you have plenty of options to deal with jump-ins, right? But my issue is, Noob Cybot should have a, if, okay, if we're not going to get strong Oki off of our anti-airs, our like single button anti-airs that knock down, because knock down doesn't mean much, Noob Cybot should have gotten a 30% anti-air that was consistent. That would have been consistent with this character's design. Because the problem that I'm running into right now is when I play Noob Cybot, someone either picks a character with a teleport, so it invalidates my zoning entirely because Noob doesn't have very good pressure, or they pick a character like Scorpion, insert Sub-Zero, insert any character with a busted jump in, and the jump-ins become in their favor because down back four is just not a convincing enough anti-air to get them to stop jumping at you. And all of Noob's two tools are grounded moves that force you to jump. So the best option, which is jumping, 
messes up Noob Saibot, and Noob Saibot doesn't have a strong answer that deters jumping. This character's design is busted because of the in-game mechanics. I just don't understand. I don't understand why they didn't give him... I, I don't know, man. I, I think what it really comes down to is down back four probably should have not put them full screen because it doesn't it's inconsistent with the character design it should have put him like mid the mid screen i don't know how they would have done the animation or maybe snag should have been kind of like down back four where he bends down so then at least you get a combo off a special anti-air um and it's consistent right because the problem with snag always comes down to like snag is just too slow and it either had to be fast or it had to be like down back four. Like Noob has to bend down and lower his hitbox and then raise a hurtbox. Like Snag would have worked better that way, but the problem is... That's the problem. That, there, Well, there's three problems actually, because you can break Snag instantly. That's another problem. You shouldn't be able to break Snag instantly either. But like those are the three problems with Snag, you know, because you could argue that Snag is probably the best option here, right? But then you lose out on the utility of the teleport and the damage of the teleport. Because the teleport is really, really strong because it does so much damage and it capitalizes on opponent's mistakes that want to overextend themselves in the neutral. So it's just really weird. The design doesn't make sense to me. It's unfortunate because if you really do have to choose between snag or the teleport or you don't get a strong anti-air, you don't get a strong deterrent. And I wish it wouldn't be that way. The ideal thing probably would have been to give him snag along with his teleport and spirit ball. That would have been the ultimate noob because then when Scorpion jumps at me, and I don't have a I don't have a variation for this, but basically if Scorpion were to jump at me, um, and I might show this in another video, but if Scorpion were to jump at me here, and I had Snag, it doesn't matter where he jumps, he's gonna get launched, right? Which would have been more ideal, even though this isn't the best anti-air, because characters like Term, you know, and Shang will still, they'll still jump on you. Uh, at least with Snag, you get some damage, or you get the idea of some damage, like, if they break, you get them off breakaway, right? But with this variation, it's really, really hard, like... I don't know, maybe teleport should have linked in, I, I don't know. I don't know what the solution is, I just know that I've noticed this is a huge problem with Noob, and now I understand why people don't think Noob is as good. It's, be it's because of this one problem. It literally is this one problem. If Noob could, if Noob could keep you grounded with his anti-airs because you didn't want to jump at him, right? And then he could use his grounded moves, like Slide and Ghost Ball, or Spirit Ball, he'd be a good character. Because then, that would be that would literally be his game plan. His game plan would be, throw a Spirit Ball, throw a Slide, when you jump, and he anti-airs, he hits you for 30, right? So you can't jump, you have to stay on the ground, you have to deal with Slide and Ghost Ball. The only way you'd be able to beat him is getting cl up close, because his up close game's not strong, his staggers are okay at best, and his throws put you full screen. And on top of that, you could beat him by zoning him out full screen, right? Because his teleport's really slow, and he has to use it on a read. So that would have been a perfect that would have been a perfect design. You could beat him full screen, beat him up close, but then when you got mid screen, you couldn't jump at him, and you have to deal with his grounded his grounded specials. Perfect design. I don't understand why they didn't go with this. Or at least the way that they went with it was very flawed because his anti airs are trash in his base uh, customs. But it's not like he doesn't have an answer. It's just a very glaring flaw in this variation, right? So anyway, that's all I have to tell you guys today. There's really nothing else to talk about. I mean, I guess my best advice is to pick Snag and do down for him to Snag. But I just don't see how viable that is personally, but anyway, have fun playing MK11 and uh, fighting games and have a good fight.